Hi, this is Dr. Tony Cooper, and this is Life Without Baggage. In this podcast, I'll help you develop a stronger sense of self, develop firmer boundaries, and also learn how to lean into the gentle promptings of the Holy Spirit who can help you navigate life. I have dozens of bonus videos posted that will help you in these areas and also will help you develop stronger coping skills. In each of the program notes, there's a link where you can request a free digital book, Understanding Your Dreams, where you can find my other media and also where you can find my books on Amazon. Just a reminder before we get into today's episode that this is not a substitute for medication or counseling. If you're having thoughts of harming yourself or another person, or if this material triggers you, please contact your doctor or a mental health specialist to help you with your concerns. Recently, I was a guest on a podcast with Tom Molyneux. The title of the podcast was Dealing with Trauma. So we focused on how to address unresolved trauma, which influences a variety of unwanted emotions, rejection, negative thoughts, self-rejection, things like that. So before we get into today's podcast, I'm going to ask if you're not already subscribing or following me, if you would do so on whatever platform that you're listening. So here's today's episode, Dealing with Trauma. Today, I will be talking to Dr. Tony Cooper. Welcome on the episode, Dr. Tony. How are you doing today? Thank you. Very good. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks for joining me. Do you want to start off by telling us a little bit about yourself and how you got into doing what you're now doing? Okay. So um, that's a long story, so I'll make it a short, short answer. So I began in private practice in 1986. And as I was working with people, mostly adults, I noticed how many people had some kind of trauma in their background or abuse or something pretty dramatic that affected how they coped with life as adults. So I started to uh, focus more and more on understanding what trauma does to people and then looking at strategies of how people can move past what they've been through and have a more what I call being fully alive in their body, soul, and spirit. So I've been in private practice that whole time. I've also done some other things, teaching at college, training medical students and interviewing, continuing ed courses. I like to do different things. And I've gotten into the digital world with podcasts and videos to, to again, help people understand how to cope better and be fully alive. Yeah, amazing. And I'm guessing that throughout your career, you've worked with a lot of clients. You know, if you've been working in this space for over 35 years, that's a long time a lot of people. People are interesting. Has there been anything that you've discovered through working with so many people over quite a long period of time? People are all different. And so that's what makes it, for me, I, my work is like detective work. It's like, okay, we're going to figure out what's going on. And then what is the path for this person to take them where they want to go? Because everybody's a little bit different. There are principles that hold true but um, I just, I find people very interesting and I really enjoy helping people get to where they want to be. I've worked a lot with uh, people with addictive tendencies, sexual addictions, um, not as much directly on porn addiction, but the principles that apply to healing from trauma, uh, expanding our coping skills, and then breaking habits that are problematic for us. So when it comes to trauma, are there any particular techniques or therapies which you tend to use with clients that help them? I would say I'm probably pretty eclectic. So part of it is being able to talk about what you've been through with a person who's not judgmental. And Most people that have been through trauma, they reject themselves in some fashion. They carry a lot of guilt and shame. They have rejected themselves as weak, as uh, inferior. There's a lot of things that go on. And so I help people begin to address 
the way that they internalized what happened to them, and then changing how they view themselves, how they view other people, how they view life, helping them build in uh, soothing activities to help them feel safe, to build their supports, to learn how to selectively trust. It's not good if we don't trust anybody, but we also can't trust everyone. And so people who have been traumatized often get stuck in one mode. They're rescuing others. They're giving in to other people all the time. They're fiercely independent where nobody gets in. And so it's not good for us to be locked into one mode. So we just gently start to look at how they talk to themselves, how they view themselves. A big thing I do with people traumatized or not is I have people pay attention to the things that they say to themselves all day long because that is basically re-traumatizing yourself. And so you have to, anything you would not say to your friend, to your child, you should not say to yourself. So I just start to work with how people talk to themselves, how they discount their own thoughts and feelings. And as they begin to respect themselves, there starts to be movement through trauma. Because trauma affects how your body operates, it affects your emotional life, it affects your relationships and your ability to trust. So it's very important to start at the core. You're going to be more prone to addictions if you don't know how to soothe yourself because most addictions are an effort to soothe yourself in some fashion to the physiological parts of when life you know, aggravates us, upsets us. We need some tools to calm that down. And if we can connect with other people, we'll also be a little more like centered and stable and feel more solid inside. So as we address these different things, it becomes easier to manage whatever your addictive tendencies are. Because most people have something. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I really like what you said there about letting go of some of the shame and the inner critic and that those negative thoughts which can just like keep on going round and round and treating yourself really badly because I think that's something which I would struggle with a lot in the past and a lot of people who are trying to quit quit porn really, really struggle with. I think that's one of the main problems is that people have low self-esteem and low confidence and then that leads to them wanting to escape those feelings and feel safe again. And so they use porn as a coping mechanism. But then because of that, they end up feeling low and start beating themselves up more and more. And then it just becomes this really negative cycle of, of shame and self-hatred. And it's, mm-hmm. it's really hard to escape that. So I wonder, how do you start to bring the negative thoughts into conscious awareness a little bit more? Pointed out while people are talking to me something that they say, like, this is really stupid, but it's like, why are you saying it's stupid? And so I just start to help them pay attention to it. And after I point it out a few times, they're going to start noticing it when they go home. And then just so if you notice it, like a lot of people call themselves names, like when I make a mistake, when I'm doing some sporting event. You know, I say things to myself that I think, okay, that's not a nice way to talk. And then you can re-state, like, yes, I made a mistake. I'm going to do better this time. And so just starting to shift how you talk to yourself gently. Don't say, well, look how stupid I am. I'm still doing that. I mean, so unproductive. And yet most people do it. So it's also useful if... Generally, this self-rejection started with someone who rejected us or treated us badly, and then we internalized that rejection. So I do encourage people to work through, write a letter you do not send, do not send the letter, write it out of all the anger, the hurt, and start to process where the rejection started. And then you can choose to forgive that person. That doesn't mean it was okay what they did. But when we don't forgive other people, we have given them space in our heads to ch- to affect us every day. So we release them. That doesn't mean you trust them or have to be around them. But we want to put that in the past and not carry it with us anymore. 
and people can use imagery of how they let go, how they say goodbye. Um, you know, the Vikings used to put dead bodies on a ship and send them out. So you can, with imagery, put that situation, put that relationship on the ship and wave goodbye to it. You know, you, you want to do things to make a, a boundary between who you are now, I'm not letting this define me anymore, and what you've been through. It's real. It affects who you are. But we don't want to live in that anymore or keep it alive by how we talk to ourselves. Yeah, that's really, really powerful. And I think that's a big thing is that people do internalize what happened to them. And it's not about who they are. It's not about deep down, like intrinsically, their personality or their genetics or anything like that at all. Instead, it's just something happened to them. And that's unfair. And that shouldn't have happened. And it's it's not good. Uh, so as best as we can, we want to protect ourselves from things that are going to take us backwards. And also as best as we can, you want to develop other parts of your personality, your other interests, the uh, creative uh, sports, making things, fixing things, um, music. Keep developing other sides of your personality so that you keep growing that you become more and more of who you are and not what society wants to shove down your throat or shove in your face or define you as best you can take charge of things. Yeah, absolutely. Identity plays such a massive part here. And the more you identify as somebody who struggles with porn, the worse the problems are often going to be. And if you can shift your focus towards healthy habits and pursuing your goals and other avenues, as you say, then that can be amazing for your identity and just who you are as a person. And so you end up focusing less on the problem and more on the solution in many ways. So I was wondering, do you have any other advice for anybody who is maybe watching or listening to this and is struggling? It's very hard to, to make and maintain healthy connections. So I would just encourage people to be patient with yourself. Try to put yourself around people, maybe someone you trust that won't judge you, but will encourage you and to keep building friendships so that those social needs that need for connection that is sadly lacking in culture to keep making those meaningful connections because that will help protect us from stress and addiction of every kind. Mm, definitely. I really like this short episode that we've recorded today because I feel like although it's been quite quick and short there's just been so much value like overall what you shared with us today I feel could definitely help people it's helped me it's helped me think in a more simplistic way around a lot of this stuff although it can be quite deep and you can overthink a lot of these problems sometimes it is quite simple as well about just rejecting the whole culture of this over sexualized society and instead pursuing what's actually important instead and getting your needs met in other healthier ways so thank you so much for coming on the podcast where can people find you uh, my website dr tony cooper.com that is the best way you can find all my media books podcasts videos i have tons of videos on coping skills so thank you so much for having me yeah brilliant thanks for coming on thanks a lot for watching or listening and i do hope you have an amazing rest of your day